Okay, it is good evening or good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to our, our second chat, me and Dave. Um, Dave, we're gonna talk about the second truth, God is a good father. Okay. And I've been thinking about, but we believe God is a good father. We know that Jesus has, in his, when his time on earth, he, he showed us his relationship with God. He, ne- he said he never did anything without the Father. Right. So Jesus did so many things in terms of miracles, just mm. the way he lived life. Now we're in a situation where we as Christians have to, are part of this lockdown. Our church is shut down. And then you have certain preachers, or I'm like, for instance, I listen to the leader of the Zionist movement who says, God is more important than the president. Easter is more important. Mm. And they are going to defy this. And I'm just, you know, my first reaction is, but that's silly, but I mean, you know, we're going to infect so many people. But then I was thinking, is this, is this guy's faith maybe a little bigger than, than my faith, you know? Is it not, what would Jesus have done in this situation? Would he have defied the thing to say, could shut down, withdraw? Or would he have defied it and actually, so I was just thinking in that, how do we, for instance, if we're in a situation where we speak to people, and people say, okay, you say God is a good father. What's going on here? Why are you retreating? Why aren't you actually out there then living this life that you're claiming that you're part of? Yeah. So mm. that was just a question I had around mm. that, Dave. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, but of course there's a difference between faith and presumption. So let's just clarify that. And just because something is, is, is overly confident and strong and, and uh, ins- insistent doesn't necessarily mean it's a faith stance. So you can be presumptuously uh, assertive. So we've got to be sure we're catching the Father's heart. And that's what Jesus says in John 5, 19. The Son can do nothing other than that which he sees the Father doing. And he's carrying the Father's heart in it. Now, someone who, who for instance, wants to defy the the, uh, the wisdom of our state president who says, yeah. stay home, stay safe, for your, if not only for your own sake, but for your neighbor's sake. Yeah. That surely is a Christian action. Yeah. And it would be actually unchristian to put your neighbor at risk. So I want to just come right up front and say, yeah. to put others at risk out of, out of our uh, assertiveness is not Christian. Mm. As much as we want to say that God is more important, well, he is important, but here's the thing. Our president has not made an immoral call. He's actually made a very, very strong humanitarian call, yeah. and we should be allying ourselves with that. Yeah. Uh, I think it, uh, it speaks of a, a twisted uh, spirituality to, uh, to become overly zealous for another presumptuous approach. Yeah. I hope that makes sense no, to you. No, it does. Then the next question is then, there will be situations where people going to need prayer. Yes. People in hospitals or people at home. Right. How do we then approach that? Because how do we then practice the laying on of hands and go preach, pray for someone and know that you're walking into a war yeah. zone and that you might come back and affect, infect your family? How do you then work with this, this thing, uh, do what Jesus did, mm. pray for the sick? Yeah. Practically, how are we going to do this? Yeah, yeah. Well, right now, we have been urged, and this is the authority of the landers, and we need to honor that, uh, to uh, uh, practice uh, physical distancing. And, you know, even in, in the time of the Book of Acts, they would put a hanky or, a, or even when Peter's shadow cross on someone, uh, they were healed from the, the, that which symbolized the one who carried faith. So we can do that. We can pray long range we can, and we can express it through social media. We don't have to physically be present um, and put them at risk uh, in our presumptuous approach that only our physical touch will bring the healing. Now, that's not to say that uh, when Jesus touched lepers and things that he was being presumptuous, not at all. Uh, he understood what the Father was wanting to do. But right mm. now, in the context of our world and our pandemic, we've been asked not to do that. Yes. I think we need to honor that. And we can pray for people from a distance and, and trust God. The same God can heal, who would also heal through the laying on of our hands yeah. without putting them at risk yeah. or ourselves and anyone else who we might otherwise affect yeah. if, we carry, if we become carriers, you know? Yeah. I think it will really, I mean, when, when we talk about um, things are never going to be the same, I think yeah. there's, there's, it's going to, our, our, the way we think, the way we reason even our, our, our Christianity, the way we're doing things, I think there's some exciting things Absolutely. lying ahead for us, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
You know, what is challenging for us, eh, Vauter, is, is, and the vineyard is very strong with us. We've, we've been blessed by God to see the value of uh, the tension of the kingdom between the already and the not yet. The kingdom has come, it's still coming, and it's delayed. So mm. we, we're enjoying the, the already and the not yet. Uh, there's a, an ongoing dynamic going on here. If we emphasize the one more than the other, we'll get out of balance. Yeah. And so we do live with the tension of both these. Uh, and so we, we, that helps us when we try and answer the question, why, not, why is not everybody healed when we pray for them? Yeah. Uh, and we don't have to go running around saying, where's the sin, where's the unbelief, who's at fault, and becoming recriminatory about it. Uh, we can say, Lord, we trust in you. We trust you, Father, and in your time you will do this. We don't want to become overly optimistic, nor are we pessimistic and say it's all for delayed for the future. So that's another thing that helps us yeah. in how we're praying for people, keeping in mind the tension of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Dave, just another thing I want to ask you. you know, there's a lot of excitement amongst Christians. There's a new way of opportunity to do things. My concern is that you know, that we can actually become, instead of becoming more inclusive, we could actually become even more exclusive. Here at the church, mm. the doors are open and anyone can come in. Now we are going home and we are mm. connecting with our, with our fellow um, immediate community relationship. relationship. Yeah. And that, you know, the challenge is how are we going to extend to the, you know, how are yeah. we not going to become inclusive, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, become more inclusive, but rather become, uh, or more exclusive, become yeah, more yeah, inclusive. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. bringing other people in, you know. In this time, we are separate from, 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 yeah. from each other. Yeah, we have a, an opportunity right now, actually, on the other end, to draw aside a while and to dig deep with the Lord and with uh, our, our, probably our more primary relationships. And that's a good place for our spirituality mm. to be tested. Jesus often, like uh, I think of the, uh, the demoniac that he healed on the Decapolis, and he, uh, his guy, the guy whose name was Legion, you remember the story yeah. with the 2,000 pigs and all that? And um, he wanted to follow Jesus straight away, and Jesus says, go home. Go home. Go, go yeah. to those in you. And, and he said this many times to people that experience his power and his message. And he wanted them to go and practice the impact of the gospel in their primary relationship first. And in a sense, that's what's happening for us yeah. globally. We're all going home. Yeah. We're going back to ground zero. Yeah. The, re, the, button, the reset button is being pushed. And we're re-examining a lot of fundamentals, our personal relation with God, a relation with our primary networks. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll work it out from there as the reset takes its, its course. Yeah. So I think that's, that's an encouragement for, for us, you know, is to actually not get anxious because yeah. the need is going to be so big. And maybe to see this then as a sabbatical in a way that we actually work on those, those primary relationships, working on the relationship with God, yeah. the time will come yeah. that there will be a call for yeah. volunteers, yeah. focus, you know, and, right. and, and, and that we can actually then exercise yeah. this. I think it answered my question in that time because I was getting a bit anxious being a, a man that, that loves the book of James. You know, I want to do yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and how do I actually, yeah. how am I, I going to do it? You know, I'm going to tell my wife I'm going to sneak out and quickly go work in the hospital and come yeah. back. You know? No, no. So we, we, we've been called to, uh, by the authority of the land to, and we should do that. We yeah. should be honoring him. And so we do that as a matter of our Christian faith and conviction. This is not a moral call. It's a humanitarian call. Yeah. So if we honor that and we see that and we do it well, God will bless us for that. Yeah. This is a good thing. You know, if we rush out there as if it all depends on us and we have some kind of messianic complex at yes. our hands and our yes. involvement. But hold on, the Lord yeah. can do it. He's doing yeah. it through specialized people. And, and right now, it's a time for us to draw aside and to wait. Solitude. Solitude is a healthy thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, permanent isolation is not a good thing, but taking solitude, Jesus did that. Yeah. He often went to spend a night alone with the Father, and it prepared him for better ministry and connection the next day. Yeah. You know? Thank you, Dave. That's the end of this session.